Hi, I am Becky Gerritsen. I am the executive director of Eagle Forum of Alabama. At the start of this, I want to direct you to go to alabamaeagle.org, where this speech will be posted, and the others as well. And also, if you go to our YouTube channel, you will be able to find this. I'm going to cite some research, and so you can use that later. <clears throat> My motto is, be kind, speak truth. And maybe that should be the title of this speech. We must engage in this most important fight that we will ever have. As this battle heats up, you have the job of exposing lies and speaking the truth with kindness. Always remember that those who have had abortions made their decision, some made their decision to abort on lies. They may still currently believe those lies, but many post-abortive mothers wake up one day and realize the truth of what they have done. They struggle with guilt, shame, and remorse. They need to be shown love and compassion and not judgment. Let's talk about some of these lies. <clears throat> it's not a life. The truth is, science is with us. Embryology shows this. Science declares that within hours of fertilization, a new life is created with its own distinct DNA. Within three weeks, it has a heartbeat. We know that babies can feel pain. Babies, even tiny ones, in the first trimester have a nervous system. By 12 short weeks, all of their organs are formed. Not only do we know from science that they feel pain, but we can see them on the ultrasound during an abortion as they try to escape away from the instruments that are stabbing into their precious bodies and pulling their limbs apart and crushing their skulls. Pro-abortion folks can say all day long it's a clump of cells, <clears throat> but the truth is it's a fact that it's a baby. It's a distinct, unique human being. So don't back down. It is the truth and science is on our side. They are wrong. Another argument, especially since we passed our law here in Alabama, the argument that there is a need for an amendment for rape and incest. Abortion proponents, as you hear all the time now, say that rape, babies that have been conceived in rape should be aborted. But the truth is, and this is where you want to look at the research, the only major study of pregnant rape victims that has ever been done, Sandra Maricorn, found that 75 to 85 percent of those that have been raped and got pregnant chose against abortion. The, this evidence alone should cause people to pause and reflect on the presumption that abortion is wanted or even best for sexual assault victims. Let me give you some more truth about abortion and rape victims. Adoption or even keeping the baby is a better alternative. The research from Dr. Reardon's book shows that rape victims have a four times more chance of dying within one year of the abortion than those who choose life. They also have a higher murder rate, suicide rate, drug overdose, depression, addiction, and more. Women's rights begin in the womb and we support women. We should not subject rape victims to more violence. Both the mother and the child are helped by preserving life, not by perpetuating more violence. Uh, here's another thing you must realize. Abortion destroys the evidence of rape. Rapists love abortion. They can violate woman after woman knowing that the evidence of their crime will be erased at an abortion clinic. Think of the human trafficker. They don't want their property to be pregnant. Stopping abortion in the case of rape hurts human trafficking and that's a good thing. The enormity of the crime does not justify murder. If the punishment for the crime is going to be death, then let's kill the rapist and not the baby. It is shameful. It is shameful to exploit rape victims as an excuse of killing more children. So I encourage you to stand firm and speak the truth. I support life at all stages, no matter, no matter the circumstances. I am Becky Gerritsen, and I am unapology pro-life, and I am unapologetically Alabama. Be kind and speak truth.